put all this work into this wedding. It's coming out really good. Everything looks amazing. You've worked so hard and I'm so proud of us and where we are now and I can't wait to take the next few steps of our lives together. Um, can't wait to make the best of it. I love you, can't wait to marry you. Um, let's do this. I'm feeling overjoyed to marry my best friend. So I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you and go on many adventures. And we finally get to get married. COVID wedding, week later. <laughs> and I can't wait. I love you so much, baby. I can't wait to have a family with you and share many more memories. So there's still time to rethink this, bro. I'm just kidding. Um, congrats, uh, congratulations to the both of you. Um, I know that you guys are gonna be a great pair together and uh, love you guys. Congratulations uh, to my brother and my sister in love. I wish you guys the best and all the happiness in the world. May your love last a lifetime. Welcome to the family, Chelsea. And you miss Asueta. giveth this woman to this man.
You may be seated. On behalf of the Sasueta family and Howardson family, we do want to welcome everybody today and thank you for being here on behalf of this incredible couple. Sister Chell, you look beautiful. Brother Saul, you do look handsome today, but you look better together than you did by yourself. The first institution that God ever made, and not just made, but that he instituted, was marriage. And marriage at its conception was based around a daily fellowship with God. Man and women, woman were incomplete by themselves, even though they were made fearfully and wonderfully. And so God gave them to each other, making them complete only when joined by his hand. Today, God is completing you both. What a beautiful day that incompleteness could find its wholeness and its togetherness in each of you. God intended marriage to have a fellowship with him daily. In fact, if I could give a small bit of advice is that any marriage founded upon fellowship with God will last. Prayer will take us through any storm. Don't let the sun go down upon a discouragement, an opinion, or as the Bible says, upon wrath. And believe it or not, sometimes that's there. But if you can learn to grab her hand and you his and together kneel and begin to pray, the peace of God that passes all understanding is a surety because that's what marriage and fellowship with him is all about. In a world that is divided today, what a day to get married. I celebrate you both today for your courage, your tenacity, but your maturity these last few weeks as I have seen you take challenge after challenge and field it like a pro. Your Holy Ghost and again your maturity has brought us to this day and what a celebration. But in a world that's divided, the house cannot be. In fact, they say that the fabric of a nation is made up by the strength of its home. As a pastor, I can tell you today that strong churches are the product of strong homes. And I'm looking at a complete strong home coming together. Be one, be united, be one flesh. As of today, it's no longer I, me. Now it's an us thing. And what a beautiful thing. What God has and is putting together, the scripture instructs us to let no man put asunder. No man, no woman, no situation, no job, no sickness, no peril, no pandemic. Don't let anything get in between what God is doing. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that charity, can we call it love? Because love is an act of giving. It suffereth long and is kind. It envieth not, it vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, it doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. I know neither one of you have a temper, so but just let me read what the Bible says. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity. I want to charge you as a young couple today to not celebrate the iniquity of the world that you're going to raise a family in by being careful who you fellowship with and by having a home that is built and grounded upon God's word. There's a sanctity in a Holy Ghost filled home and I know your home is gonna have it. Love is something that beareth all things. It believeth all things. It hopes in all things. There's a lot of hope in you two today. And in God and with God, all things are possible. Love is not a feeling. That's why today people fall in and out of love because they don't understand what love is. But love, as we know, is a verb, meaning that when we do the correct things, we feel the correct feelings. So never quit doing the right things and you will always feel the right things. But love is something that comes from giving. So as we become one flesh today, we can never expect our spouse 
to give us something that we have not given first ourselves. We cannot garner love. We cannot expect love and be inactive because neither one of us have individuality as of today. And so marriage is not 50-50, but marriage is 100 and 100. I'm so thankful and honored today to stand with you. I believe in you that every dream that's in your spirit will come to pass. And this is the beginning of an incredible journey. Why don't you join us in prayer this evening? Savior, we love you. And we are so thankful, God, that you are here. Thankful, Lord, for these families. Most important, this young couple. God, this is your house. These are your children. And we invoke the presence of the Holy Ghost upon us all. I want your spirit in the midst of this wedding this evening, God. We invoke your holy and righteous name. We beg your presence to invade everything we do. Go with us. Keep us. Protect us. Anoint us. And use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. It's already been said, but I want to say it. So, you look handsome. Chowie, good night, girl. This is awesome. The, uh, the season of social distancing is just about over. No masks and no six feet. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good day. Marriage, uh, marriage is really like an empty box. All you can take out of it is only what you put in it. And if you will continue to invest in it, you can always draw from it. But if you don't put anything in it, it's going to be like your brother's bank account. And... Uh, Just kidding. Just kidding. People need to smile. It's too many frowns. Too much anger. Too much tension. We're having a wedding. We're enjoying this. This is God's idea. This is God's thing. And, uh, the very first miracle of Jesus happened at a wedding. The very first one. I've thought about that many times simply because he picked a great, happy, victorious, celebratory time to do a miracle. Here's a miracle today. What a great thing. It's already been said, but Thank you for everybody that is here to witness this historical event. They really are getting married. In the book of Genesis, and this has also been alluded to, the Bible says that it was not good for man to be alone. That word alone in the Hebrew didn't mean by himself. It meant incomplete. It was not good for man to be incomplete. Men typically live from the neck up. They're analytical. They process life through the process of analysis. That's why they are pretty linear in their thinking. That's why they don't like all the details, just yes or no. And women, conversely, live usually from the neck down. They emote. Everything runs through their heart. They feel everything. But it wasn't good for man just to be an analytical creature by himself. God had to bathe that analytical thinking with the emotion of a woman, and the two became, became one flesh. I heard an old man say one time that man without woman was incomplete, but with woman he was finished. So I'll leave that alone. That's just a personal joke between Brother Cardicelli and I. But anyhow... And so 
when he, when he completed Adam, he didn't complete Adam from just a, another source. But he took out his own rib, closest to his heart. A bone not from his foot that you would step on her. Not a bone from his skull to rule over him, but from his heart to walk side by side. And so today, God is completing both Saul and Chelsea. And you will no longer, uh, no longer live individualized. In fact, this coming Sunday morning when you come to church, it'll be the first time you've come to church as a couple, married. So this is going to be a wonderful thing. But... But God said, God said in his word that because, because of this, because of this, this, this thing called marriage, man leaves. He leaves his mom and dad. Now, your, your parents love you, but they're glad you're gone. <laughs> and, and he leaves, and, and he cleaves. You don't just leave, you cleave. And now to little Chelsea. You're cleaving to her, and together you become very, very much one. So it's obvious from the beginning of the Bible that marriage is God's idea, never man's idea. In fact, God had to put man asleep to get him married, but he got him married, and he woke up married. I mean, you're not asleep. You're, you're doing this standing up. It's a good thing. But, but um, because of that, we take this serious. And you say, well, how can be serious when you're smiling? Well, because I can smile and be serious at the same time. Um, and so I just, I want to talk to you for a couple of moments. Marriage is the greatest institution. It's the first institution, but the greatest institution. Nobody should ever get between you and your marriage. Nobody. Not your parents, not your grandparents, not a dog, not a cat, not a job, not money. Nothing gets between you and your marriage. The only person that can get between you and your marriage is God. And God's the glue that's going to hold the two of you together. Amen. And so, as we stand here in this... Friday evening in a historic time of our world and history is being written powerfully. Here today we're saying we're going to stick with the themes of God and the thoughts of God and the theme of God and we're going to complete two lives. Chowie, I've known you since before you knew yourself. I've watched you grow up from a little bitty little girl and grow into a great, powerful young woman who has lived for God. You've, you've, you've had chances to get off the highway of righteousness, but you kept it between the lines. You've, you've stood against temptation. You've stood the test of time. And I salute you, and I'm proud of you. And I want this congregation to know I feel good about this day. And I love you, Chowie. You've done a great job. Saul, you've done an awesome job, buddy. You've, you've done what's right. You're doing what's right. You've sought counsel. We've talked many times. You've shared your dreams with me. You've been open to that. That's what builds real men. That's what builds real men. I believe that, that the future of the two of you is, is bright. And it's unlimited. Let's just do it right. And so I, I want to ask you a question, Brother Saul. Before, before God and before all of these witnesses and before all the people that's listening online, wherever you are in your living room or wherever, we're used to saying that. Saul, do you take this little Miss Chelsea slash Chowie to be your wedded wife? I do. You do? Good. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, 
protect her and keep yourself only for her in sickness and in health, including COVID, and forsaking all others. Keep yourself only for her so long as you both shall live. You do. That's, that's good. Chelsea, before God and these witnesses, do you take Saul to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, keep him? I didn't put this in my notes, but I'm going to put it right now. And cook for him <laughs> in sickness and in health and forsaken all the other suitors that's tracked you down through the years. And keep yourself only for Saul, so long as you both shall live. I do. You do. Good. Good. That's a really good thing. Would you guys face each other now and take each other's hands? And I, Brother Saul, I want you to repeat after me. I, Saul, take you to be my wedded wife. I, Saul, take you to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I pledge you my love. And thereto I pledge you my love. Shelly, can you handle this? <laughs> I, Chelsea. I, Chelsea. Take you, Saul. Take you, Saul. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For a whole lot richer. <laughs> Don't want the poorer. <laughs> in sickness and in health. <laughs> to love and to cherish. <laughs> till death do us part. <laughs> according to God's holy law. <laughs> Thereto I pledge you my love. song. <laughs> nice candle. You know, um, life's about to kick you in the teeth. <laughs> and it's a fun ride. I remember when I first got married, I did not imagine had no idea, no concept on how expensive it was mm. to have a wife. Because yeah. they always need something. <laughs> and something doesn't come in ones. No. It comes in twos, and threes, and fours. However, it's a whole lot cheaper 
than the price of misery you paid being single. So just remember, she's worth it. Shall we? Just remember, when this man comes home from a hard day's labor, he doesn't just want to see your beautiful face. He wants to smell something in that kitchen. <laughs> just remember. Just remember. Because that's what you just got to remember. If you haven't learned to cook by now, you better learn quick, girl. <laughs> quick. You got it? Good. Three other things I want to say. One of the most powerful three-word statement in the world is, I love you. But there's two other three-word sentences that you have to have in your marriage. After you learn to say, I love you, now you need to learn how to say, I'm so sorry. And the third three-letter sentence is, I forgive you. The greatest gifts that you can give each other is the gift of forgiveness, the gift of understanding. Look, let me help you. If you don't do anything, you're going to get old one day. But since you're going to get old, why don't you start creating the old man you're going to be, Saul, and Chowie, Chelsea, excuse me, the old woman you're going to be, and use a lot of humor. If you're going to get wrinkles, let them be laugh lines. Don't let them be stress and frown lines. Life is too stressful to take it so serious. Enjoy laughter in your home, laughter in your marriage. Don't be uptight. Don't live uptight. Enjoy life. Chelsea's not perfect. But Saul's not perfect. And nobody on this platform is perfect. Except for a couple people who think they are. You hear me? Enjoy life. Relax. Now I know you're thinking, would you hurry and get, get on with this? Well, I am. I'm getting on with it. So in as much as you've heard songs, and in as much as you have lit a unity candle, and in as much as you have unashamedly shared vows one to another and, and heart to heart, I, I, I want to tell you something as, as, a, as a preacher of the gospel and by the authority invested in me, first of all, by God, second of all, by this state, the state of California, I now... We talked about this yesterday, and I said yesterday I was going to do this, but today is yesterday. Now, I now, Chelsea, you've waited a long time oh, so long. to hear this, but it's, it's my pleasure to right now, this is really happening, Chelsea, to right now pronounce you husband and wife. And what God had put together, let no man put asunder. Now, now, Brother Saul, you've probably gone on YouTube to find out how to do this. But you may now kiss your bride. It is my distinct, our distinct honor to present to you, brother and sister, Saul Zasweta.
Chelsea and Saul Sasueta. I love you guys. Take care of my daughter, Saul. I know you're a good man. You've got a heart of gold. I know you'll work hard. I know you'll love her. Chelsea, love Saul. Uh, like Bishop said, uh, make sure you learn how to cook. <laughs> I love you both. I'm proud of you both as a dad. Uh, couldn't ask for a better man for you, Chelsea. I know Saul will take care of you and do a good job. Um, if you ever need advice, Saul, Chelsea, feel free to come, talk to me and mom. We'll always love you, we'll be there for you. Uh, we're excited for your new adventure in life. Um, that's about it, I love you guys very much. Hi kids, I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you. It was beautiful, God was there. I can't tell you enough how much I love you both. I, I am so thankful that God blessed me with two beautiful young people that have put God first and um, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. I love you. Mwah. I just want to say that I'm really proud of you, Saul. I'm really proud of both of you um, for doing things right. Um, of course, I'm wishing you the best always. Um, great marriage, great family, um, great journey. Um, you're a great man. I'm really proud of you of everything you've accomplished so far. And I can't wait to see the many, many other things that you will accomplish. Um, Chelsea, love you. Um, couldn't have asked for a better daughter. Um, be part of our life. I welcome you. Um, I love you both. And I can't wait to meet my grandbabies. Love you. It's got mothballs on it. You got that mafia, buddy. Oh, trying to hide it. Hey, you got that mafia. Say hello yeah. to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. I gotta took a star roll of Godfather. All right, y'all, let's fill it up. Woo! Right here, right here. Oh, hey, brother Saul, sister Chell. This is the day we're here. COVID and all, coughing and hacking, but our lungs are working. Challenges accepted, you guys are going forward. Proud of you, everything you came through. Beautiful day, beautiful wedding. And we're, we actually pulled it off by the grace of God. Looking forward to you getting back and starting your leadership and a great life right here at Hilltop. We love you, I'm proud of you. God bless you. Oh, that's it. This is, uh, hey, this is big. I'm feeling something big over here. Hey. That's that Benita Hills money right there. Go ahead, Elder. Hey, glory. Hey, that's, hey, you need, get, in Jamaica, they use gold coins, I'm just saying. Come on, hey, let them know how we do it in Jamaica. I always knew there would come a day when Chelsea would get married and I would have to share her. And I always knew it would be hard. It would be a hard day for me. Since wedding planning began, I've had a whirlwind of emotions, but I couldn't be happier for her. I know she's found her person that she can't live without. 
I never knew she could be so gushy <laughs> until her and Saul started dating. <laughs> I want to thank you, Saul, for making her this happy, <laughs> for being her person and making a vow to love her till the end. I'm excited to witness this next level of your love story. I pray that you have an abundance of love, happiness, and blessings to Saul and Chelsea Sasueta. I love you guys. <laughs> All right, um, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'll make this quick. <laughs> Two days ago, Sister Cardicelli asked if I prepared a speech for Saul. And I had no idea I was publicly speaking in front of a large group of people because this is my first and hopefully my last time I have to be a best man. <laughs> so uh, here we go. For those of you that do not know my name, it's Daniel and I'm today's best brother. Saul and Chelsea, it is an honor to stand here today. I can't be more happy for you too. So glad that we can celebrate this day with friends, family, not only from around this area, <clears throat> but from around the states, Northern California, El Centro. It's amazing how far people will travel for free food. <laughs> it's especially awesome that we are here today considering that the wedding was supposed to be last week, but Saul contracted a very popular <laughs> virus going around. He spent 14 agonizing days napping, eating, and playing video games. And not once did he ever lose hope. <laughs> Thank God he stands here today in good health. <clears throat> so let me tell you a bit about my relationship with Saul. We met in the 90s. <laughs> Back in a time where blockbusters still existed, and Game Boys were the pinnacle of technology. <laughs> Saul was the firstborn in our family, so I always showed my respect toward him. He was always first player in any video game. He was always a team captain, and he got to sleep on the top bunk. <laughs> However, over a few short years, our brotherly rivalry intensified, and I started outweighing Saul. If you looked at old family photos, you'll see Saul never showed any sign of weight gain. Meanwhile, I look like I never skipped dessert. <laughs> because of my husky physique, <laughs> go ahead, Sai. <laughs> Let it out. Um, Saul would avoid getting into physical, physical confrontations. Instead, he played the psychological card and would attack with insults. <laughs> because I weighed 50 more pounds than he did, all I had to do was tackle him to the ground and sit on him. <laughs> it was a foolproof plan, and it worked every time. Um, <clears throat> as a younger brother, I looked up to Saul in many ways. He was and is good at so many things. He has so many good qualities. Because Saul is nearly perfect and doesn't really make any mistakes, it made it hard to come up with any material for this speech. So um, there's a lot of quality Saul has, whether it's his intelligence. In grade school, Saul was an honor student and played the cello in his orchestra, while most of his classmates were worrying about their voices changing and growing hair out of weird places. <laughs> whether it's Saul's toughness, I mean, the guy just survived a virus that has no vaccine. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> <clears throat> Whether it's his compassion, he's always had a heart to stick up for what is right. Whenever he sees someone in need, he never hesitates to jump in and help. But enough about Saul and his Nobel Priest Prize. Today, Saul is a married man. Chelsea, ever since we met you, we knew you were a keeper. I particularly liked you because you laughed at my jokes, and Saul would just shake his head and call me an idiot. <laughs> You're beautiful inside and out. Kind, compassionate, smart, caring, genuine, and most importantly, you could never make my brother happy in a way that I never could. Aww. Chelsea, or should I say Chels, welcome to the family. 
There's so many Chelsea's in this world, but you're the only one that I know with two E's at the end. <laughs> Seriously though, I couldn't have asked for a better sister-in-law. And I sincerely apologize about that horrible last name you have to use from now on. <laughs> I went to pick up my tux the other day and they were like, what's your last name? Sasueta? Huh? <laughs> I ordered hot wings yesterday too and I had to spell it out over the phone. So these are the struggles that you have to deal with on a daily basis. So on Chelsea, I wish you two all the best in your life together. So let's all raise a glass to the most important people here. Saw and Chelsea. This has been a great couple. I've been known them for a long time. They've been very friendly, and I love them to death. I'm glad I wasn't out of town, because I almost went to Des Moines. <laughs>